very much, Bruce, and uh, thank you very much for all attending this webinar this evening. So I'm hoping that by the end of this session, we can have covered how we can apply primary and secondary surveys that you will use in your trauma and small animal uh, critical care patients to large animals. And um, hopefully we can interpret some of the differences in anatomy and physical exam findings in these other species that are likely to be less familiar to you. We'll have a think about what the common emergencies we're likely to be faced with. And because um, it's always difficult in 45 minutes, but I'm going to try and focus on the pet rather than on production species. But I'm happy to answer any questions on specific production species at the end. We'll have a think about relative value of different diagnostic tests and their uses in the different species. And I think that if we're going to try and talk about how to deal with large animal emergencies, we're going to be much better at that and more confident if we know how to restrain, sedate, analgese, anaesthetize, and also euthanize where appropriate, and think about drug licensing, which is perhaps a bit more important in some of these species that are regarded as food producing animals. So I think that this first slide is that the first thing to do is not to panic. We all qualify knowing lots and lots about the main species and we just need to dredge that knowledge up because we really have um, still got it, it's still in there somewhere. Um, I think that the biggest problem we have is that we lose skill and, more importantly, confidence sometimes dealing with these species that we don't treat on a day-to-day -day basis. And really what we need to do is we, take, we need to take that back to first principles. For many of us, particularly that have been, been vets for um, a, a while, um, we learn to pattern recognize in order to identify what body system is likely to be causing the clinical signs that we see and also what that specific disease process is going to be. But pattern recognition is really very hard when we're dealing with less familiar species and less common diseases. But if we just try and take a problem-based approach rather than relying on patterns, we're much more likely to get to the right answer at the end of the day. Because ultimately, the main difference between different species is physical exam findings and what your differential diagnoses are. And when you're stabilizing the emergency patient, actually, if all you're trying to do is stabilize it, the differential diagnosis may well become less important if you're going to pass those cases on to other people. And the procedures that we're going to do are going to be the same. It's just that the relative value of those procedures will vary. And we're going to talk about that a bit later in the presentation. So I'm not going to talk lots about, I've put these slides in and you've been given them as your notes. But remember that you know when we're approaching a sick, traumatized, or critically ill patient, what we're going to want to do is a primary survey to try and assess life-threatening problems. So anything that is going to lead to death or is likely to lead to death in the near future, and anything that's reducing um, global circulation and causing local hypoxia and hypercarbia. And we can do our um, ABC um, as we would do in small animal patients. So thinking about are they breathing? Have they got an OK airway? Do they have an all right circulation? Do they have any neurologic um, disability? And then once we've done that and established that probably they're OK, we can then move on to our secondary survey and think about a more complete physical examination. So the primary survey, most of the time, it's going to be pretty similar to what you would do in a small animal patient. The main difference that there's going to be is trying to um, stabilize the large animal patient from further injuring itself and when it has a neurologic injury. And it's quite hard to keep them still, um, keep them in lateral recumbency, put them on a board, etc. Um, not that I'm saying it's easy in small animals, but it's even trickier if you weigh 500 kilograms. So I think that that's probably the area that it's most different. 
for any of you who haven't come across the recover guidelines these were done by the um, College of Veterinary Emergency and Critical Care and they are open access and I've put the link on here they've come up with this is all primarily aimed at small animals but again is something that I use and I certainly teach um, in terms of approach to the large animal patient too and they came up with two mnemonics for the secondary survey where they think about making sure you don't miss stuff and you always do it in the same order so they had a crash plan as the um, mnemonic for doing your physical exam and diagnostic evaluation and they had sample for making sure you took um, a thorough history and again these have been taken from the recover guidelines and you're going to do pretty similar things again in terms of assessment of the large the large animal patient but the diagnostic tests are the area where their relative value is different and we will talk about those um, in the presentation later on the history thinking about sample as being a mnemonic for taking that history it's going to be pretty similar so in order to try and assess our patients both primary not going to be any different whatever species you are but when we move on to a secondary survey we're going to want to do a major body system assessment and what I thought I would do was just put some ideas up about normal ranges uh, so that you sort of have an idea where the starting point is so the first thing I would say I thought I would start with pigs because they are probably the most difficult of the large animal patients that I'm going to talk about today in terms of um, assessment so the first thing is, if they're easy to examine, they're very sick, and they may well be pretty close to um, not being with us anymore. And if they aren't that sick, it's making sure you use opportunistic stealth and having patience in order to do your, um, your examination. So normal heart rate should be 70 to 90, rest rate 10 to 20, temperature a bit higher than in small animals, 38 to 30, 38 and a half to 39.5 feces should be like the dog and in terms of weight it just depends a little bit on what sort of pig you're dealing with so a normal sized and um, pot-bellied pig or cooney cooney will be around about 100 kilograms if you're dealing with a big um, full-grown normal normal type of pig it might be anything up to 350 kilograms so then moving on to um, camelids uh, generally Camelids in the UK are relatively well handled. Um, normal heart rate 60 to 90, rest rate 12 to 28, and they normally have pretty quiet lung sounds when you listen to them. Obviously, because although they're not ruminants, they have compartments instead of a rumen, um, a large amount of their GI tract is for stomach. So listening to what their um, gastrointestinal bulbrigmy is on a major body system assessment pretty important and if you listen on the left hand side you should hear and feel two to four contractions a minute and these animals should have pelleted feces like you would expect in sheep and deer moving on to sheep and goat um, heart rate 80 to 100 beats per minute just as you might find in the dog sinus dysrhythmia is really very common and often um, pronounced it's just not necessarily what you might expect to hear certainly not as a large animal and vet if you don't deal with them very often rest breaks up to 28 beats per minute both of these species have inordinately loud um, respiratory sounds they sound like they are going to they have got some very severe underlying respiratory disease and that is completely normal for that species these two species again for stomachs very important and again they should have one to three contractions that you can listen to and feel on that left hand side I've included cattle because some of us end up facing cattle if they get hit by cars or um, people have got pets particularly uh, dinky ones so heart rate 60 to 80 but if they aren't well handled heart rate can be anywhere up to 100 beats per minute in order to palpate peripheral pulses, either need to use coccygeal artery, which is midline on the tail, or the auricular artery right at the base of the, um, the ear. Respirate up to 24, but again, they should have pretty quiet um, lung sounds. Again, listening and palpating um, for ruminal motor.